2020 might feel far away, but Hollywood's major studios are already planning ahead, and it's looking like it could be an incredibly exciting year for the film industry. Here are the most hotly anticipated movies coming out next year. 17 years after the release of Bad Boys 2, audiences will finally get to see another entry into the classic buddy cop franchise. Sony has slated Bad Boys for Life for January 17, 2020, bringing back Will Smith and Martin Lawrence as Miami Police Department detectives Mike Lowry and Marcus Burnett. Jerry Bruckheimer is set to return to produce the project, which will be directed by Adil El Arbi and Bilal Falah. Bad Boys for Life has had a long and difficult journey to the big screen, and many fans thought that it would never even happen, especially when the movie was pulled from the studio's release schedule and lost its initial director due to scheduling conflicts. But it appears that it's finally moving forward now and should mark a fun new opportunity for fans to enjoy the action adventures of Smith and Lawrence once again. We may not have any specific details on the movie's plot yet, but we're still pumped. The follow-up to 2014 Spectre has endured as rough a road as any entry in the franchise's five-decade history. It was uncertain for a while if Daniel Craig would even return for his fifth on-screen mission, while acclaimed train-spotting director Danny Boyle initially took and then promptly stepped out of the director's chair. Now, however, some details about 007's 25th cinematic outing are finally becoming clear. Craig will indeed return one last time in a film by true detective's Kerry Fukunaga, the first American director to helm a Bond movie. Intriguing. Craig's tenure as Bond has been marked by a distinct back-and-forth critical reception. Middling reactions to Quantum of Solace and Spectre punctuated overwhelming acclaim for Casino Royale and Skyfall. So following that pattern, this movie is set to become a rousing success. Important details such as the film's title and who will perform the theme song have yet to be announced, but we do know that Bond 25 will hit theaters on Valentine's Day 2020. Are you ready to get back to work? With pleasure, and With pleasure. After grooting it up for Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy movies, Vin Diesel is shifting gears for a different sort of comic book film. The Fast and Furious actor will step into the lead role in Sony's upcoming Bloodshot movie, adapted from Valiant Comics' successful comic series of the same name. The lead character is a wounded soldier who's been resurrected through the wonders of nanotechnology, and now he has to hunt down powerful outcasts called Harbingers. The comic premiered in 1992 and ran for 110 issues, with upwards of 7.5 million copies sold. Now with the success of violent comics-derived films like Logan and Deadpool, Valiant and Sony will surely be striving for an R rating. Given this hero's taste for blood, we'd expect nothing less. Bloodshot will be helmed by visual effects artist and first-time director Dave Wilson, and will co-star Aza Gonzalez, Michael Sheen, Toby Kebbell, and Sam Hewen, and is due out February 21st. Fans may have to wait an extra year for Fast and Furious 9, but they'll get a spin-off movie out of Dwayne Johnson and Jason Statham in the meantime, and Hobbs and Shaw should be worth the wait when it finally does hit theaters in the spring of 2019. Although we don't know much about where the main saga is headed next, the pressure to keep upping the stakes should mean it'll find a way to be even more epic and ridiculous than any of the previous installments. With Charlize Theron's cipher still alive and on the loose at the end of The Fate of the Furious, there are plenty of existing opportunities for vehicular mayhem. You can probably count on most of your favorite cast members returning, too. And the franchise's ever-increasing profile means there's always the chance to land even more big names to join the cast. Fast and Furious 9 is due for release on April 10, 2020. Film fans will finally get the answer to an age-old question on May 22, 2020, when Godzilla and King Kong face off on the big screen. Director Adam Wingard has already assured fans that his take on the two monsters will crown a definitive winner, unlike the 1962 film that first pit the two characters against each other. This will be the fourth entry in the legendary's MonsterVerse, first established in 2014's Godzilla. The Iwis won't speak their name. But I call them skull crawlers. Why? Because it sounds neat and further expanded on with Kong Skull Island. Godzilla King of the Monsters will open that world even wider in 2019, bringing old favorites like Mothra and Rodan into the fray and setting the stage for this next Clash of the Titans. Godzilla vs. Kong is the biggest project yet for Wingard, whose previous directing credits include Your Next and The Guest. As if the collision of these two screen icons wasn't fan-pleasing enough, the movie will also feature an impressive lineup of human actors. Stranger Things' Millie Bobby Brown will reprise her King of the Monsters role with Black Panther Panthers Denai Guerrera in Deadpool 2's Julian Dennison also attached to star. 
Audiences haven't seen much of Angelina Jolie over the past few years. In fact, her most recent big-budget movie was 2014's Maleficent. Now, after four years of waiting, Disney has confirmed the return of the fairy with the horns and the high cheekbones, announcing that Maleficent 2 has started production, with Jolie and Elle Fanning reprising their roles as Maleficent and Aurora. According to the synopsis, the sequel begins several years after the first chapter and follows the complicated relationship between the horned fairy and the soon-to-be queen. Hot off her appearance in Ant-Man and the Wasp, Michelle Pfeiffer has signed on to the project as Queen Ingrid. Harris Dickinson, who has just finished playing John Paul Getty III in the FX series Trust, will step in to replace Brenton Thwaites as Prince Philip, Aurora's love interest. Joachim Ronan, who directed 2017's Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, will venture into the Enchanted Forest to helm the feature, which is set to hit theaters on May 29th. 2017's Wonder Woman is the most critically acclaimed movie in the DC Extended Universe by a very wide margin. It makes sense, then, that Gal Gadot's next adventure as the Amazonian warrior is being fast-tracked back to the big screen, while Superman and Batman are left to struggle against a legion of issues and complications standing in the way of their next movie appearances. One misses the days when one's biggest concerns were exploding wind-up penguins. Diana's second solo story hasn't been without its own delays, however. Wonder Woman 1984 was pushed back from its original 2019 holiday season release to June 5th, 2020. When the movie does finally arrive, it will likely bring with it just the kind of colorful blast from the past its title promises, filling in part of the timeline between the first movie's World War I setting and the hero's re-emergence in Dawn of Justice. Wonder Woman 1984 will see the return of Gadot, Chris Pine, and director Patty Jenkins. SNL alum Kristen Wiig also joins the as nemesis Cheetah, who will clash with Diana in the depths of the Soviet Union. It's pretty hard to keep a movie production secret for very long, especially in the modern age. That's why it was so shocking when filmmaker Jason Reitman revealed that not only was he working on a new Ghostbusters movie, but that he already had a vague but atmospheric teaser trailer ready, announcing its summer 2020 arrival. The son of original Ghostbusters director Ivan Reitman, Jason has formed his own identity as a director with such offbeat, low-key dramedies as Juno and Tully. Now he's ready to direct and co-write a new chapter of the story he watched unfold on set as a child. Gil Kanan, the director of 2015's Poltergeist remake, will be sharing writing duties with Reitman. There were plenty of reasons for fans to be a little frustrated with Paul Feig's 2016 Ghostbusters reboot, but it's still a bold move for Reitman to return to the original timeline. He explained to Entertainment Weekly, It's not a reboot. What happened in the 80s happened in the 80s, and this is set in the present day. It remains to be seen who else will be involved. Harold Ramis passed away in 2014, Rick Moranis is in semi-retirement, and Bill Murray has long been slippery on the topic of committing to another sequel. But then, who really knows what Bill Murray could do at any given moment? I love this plan! I'm excited to be a part of it! Let's do it! Director Joseph Kaczynski made his movie debut with 2010's Tron Legacy, a sequel for a generation that hadn't even been born when its predecessor was made. Now he's set to do it again with Top Gun Maverick, the 2020 follow-up to 1986's classic Flyboy Thrill Ride. This new installment will find the original movie's hero taking the son of his fallen friend under his wing. Top Gun director Tony Scott had once envisioned a sequel to his original movie, but his death in 2010 put those plans on hold. Producer Jerry Bruckheimer remained dedicated, however, eventually hiring Kaczynski and securing the commitment of original stars Tom Cruise and Val Kilmer. Miles Teller will play the son of Goose, with Jennifer Connelly, John Hamm, and Ed Harris also joining the cast. A big part of Top Gun's success was its wildly popular soundtrack, so it's lucky that Harold Faltemeyer is also returning to compose the score, with Kenny Loggins recording a new version of Danger Zone for the movie. Feel the need for speed on June 26th. Lin-Manuel Miranda has become one of the defining songwriters and performers of his generation. Not only did he earn a Pulitzer Prize for the monumental impact of his Broadway musical Hamilton, but he's also been a delightful presence in family film and television. Meanwhile, director John M. Chu is best known for forging a cultural phenomenon in 2018 with Crazy Rich Asians. Combining these two forces can only be a great idea. And that's exactly what's going to happen in 2020, with Chu's adaptation of Miranda's debut Broadway musical, In the Heights. Though little else has been revealed about the movie, the show examines the lives of the Hispanic American residents of the Washington Heights neighborhood of New York City. Miranda himself originally played the central role of Usnavi, a young bodega owner who dreams of returning to his familial home of the Dominican Republic. After a long and troubled development history that stretches back a whole decade, In the Heights will finally hit screens on June 26th. 
The Crimes of Grindelwald may have been cursed with a less enthusiastic critical response than expected, but it nevertheless continued the Harry Potter tradition of conjuring hordes of box office gold. So there's no reason for Warner Brothers, J.K. Rowling, or director David Yates to transfigure their plans for a five-movie Fantastic Beasts franchise, and the third entry holds fast in its slated November 20th release date. The ending of the second movie left Newt Scamander and company with a number of potential paths forward. Unlike the original Harry Potter movies, the Fantastic Beasts screenplays aren't adapted directly from books, so we can't be certain just where Rowling will take her wizarding world next. She has dropped some hints, however, including the possibility that Fantastic Beasts 3 could take place in Rio de Janeiro a few years after its predecessor. We're getting not one, not two, not even three, but four Avatar sequels over the next decade, the first of which will hit theaters on December 18th, 2020. This massive undertaking reportedly has a total budget of over $1 billion, allowing director and franchise mastermind James Cameron to fully embrace a slew of new technologies and ensure that the sequels are as visually stunning as the first chapter. Cameron isn't slouching on the story either, and the movies are said to be a family saga about Jake, Neytiri, and their children. Much of Avatar's cast is set to return, with some making a comeback despite their deaths in the original film. Newcomers include Fear the Walking Dead's Cliff Curtis as Tono Wari, the leader of a clan of reef people, and Game of Thrones' Una Chaplin as Varang, a prominent character described as strong and vibrant. A group of young actors will take on mostly CGI roles as the younger set of Pandora residents, bringing the film a whole new challenge, and hopefully some new life as well. Check out some of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.